Okay, so perfect. Welcome to uh, this um, community call from the Open Air Provide. Uh, so targeting always the, um, the content providers, managers, those that are managing repositories um, uh, that we have in our in our uh, infrastructure, in Open Air infrastructure, those that are managing different kinds of data sources that we aggregate content and we provide services. So it's always a pleasure. So we didn't have the community call in the last month, but we we do this in the in the last first Wednesday of 2023, <laughs> the last community call of the of this um, of this year, which is a great pleasure. The idea is just to provide you some of the latest developments, uh, novelties uh, regarding specifically functionalities from the dashboard, but also the other components that are related with uh, with your uh, your participation in the open air infrastructure and the and the, the service itself as the provide uh, service so welcome all and uh, i see that already more people are joining so we will progress fast with this introduction as we want to cover uh, a topic on and the novelties on the the open air graph so some relevant updates that I think it's important for you to, to be aware. And we have um, our colleague, Tanasis Vergolis, that will uh, detail uh, those uh, updates. I'm not sure if and Claudio Azzari will also join you, Tanasis. Um, but uh, so in the, as Tanasis have a limited time, so we'll dedicate the first part of the meeting to this. And then we have Dimitris Pierracus to also to update us on, on, on the user statistics. There are some <clears throat> relevant updates uh, about the reports that we would like also to, to share with you. And then we can uh, first discuss the first half with the, with the Tanasis about the graph and then with Dimitris about uh, the, the statistics. And of course, so we are available for, to discuss any other issue that you, that you have. Just uh, two minutes to highlight uh, some recent news. So we usually share with you uh, what is in production in terms of uh, of our our graph. So the, um, the index and stats update, uh, update uh, is from the 23rd of November. Uh, it's important to highlight that, um, so we want to do this update, as you know, every month, but we we did it um, in 20, I think around 20 of September, we didn't have an update on October and now we have this update. So it's important to, to highlight this, that it's not a um, uh, one month update is in fact two months update, so it's relevant to, for you to be aware of, of this. And in the coming days, uh, you will receive, because this is a, a, a subsequent uh, uh, action, so you will, for those that have notifications from the broker events, for example, you re receive those, those notifications. Important also to highlight um, some things related with the full text. Um, it's always important to to share with you that uh, in the in term in the terms of use, you can you can update the terms of use related with the metadata harvesting and with the co the collection of full text. But so we are now trying to improve the information available about the what we collect, and you can see in Explore already the um, the the numbers so if you go to um, let me share here an example that i, I opened just so in the in the can you see my screen yes you still see, you see my screen okay great if you yes. if you see the um, the landing page of your data source you will see that now we have uh, the information of the collected full text visa which i think is relevant for you to be aware of the, the the number of of uh, records that we collect that you can see in the aggregation story and the collected full text that I think is important is quite relevant uh, in terms of the results of some uh, of the inference system that we have is quite relevant for example for the links to to projects as as you know some of your data sources we 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 do those links mainly from the the, the full text and not from the metadata. Uh, so if you have questions, we can reply to those questions at, after the presentations and we can discuss a bit that. Uh, and I will also just want to highlight as I have here two slides. So this is what 
you have in, in you can see and and we just want also to highlight that our intention is to put also this information available we don't have it yet so you can see it publicly available in in um, in explore but our aggregation is to improve the aggregation st story that you see from your repository we also improve now what you see is the the um, what we collect, what we transform, and what we and the version that is indexed. But we want also to put the information available here to to have for you all the information gathered in the same in the same place. So the the idea is uh, here in the dashboard where in the tab aggregation history is where you you see this information is where also you see when was the 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 content that is indexed from your repository and available in in production in our in our explore service you can see that but our idea is to improve this please also check because andre together with other colleagues did a, a good a good work to put some more information here in the in this um, right uh, um, area of information and help so where we explain what what we mean by aggregation stage collection mode etc and you can see also some more explanations and some useful links if you have doubts about what you see and uh, how to interpret this uh, this information i think you can uh, have that quite well explained so this is one highlight that we want also to share with you the other one is just to quickly to remind you about uh, the campaign that we did about onboarding data sources and research products in the Yosk marketplace. There is a webinar and uh, there are relevant instructions for you. So Andre uh, can also share these links with you here in the chat for just a reminder because we were pushing you that are part of open air to uh, it's quite easy for you to be also onboarded in the EOSC marketplace uh, to be part of the research product catalog let's say and um, so it's 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 uh, you can, if you uh, didn't have the opportunity to do that so you have instructions and the webinar to better explain you and also to let you know and we will have novelties about that about the guidelines working group in the coming year but uh, the open air guidelines we are in a, in a phase that we we want to to have it as a community driven global um, initiative so we set we kick off this in the open repositories last june in the in south africa and uh, we will start working in a in a in a working group uh, not only from people from open air but a global working group uh, representatives from different initiatives from different uh, parts of the world uh, to be part of this working group and to uh, govern the the interoperability guidelines from from, from open air Okay, and with these explanations and these novelties, um, um, well, I will come back to this report that we published, but I, uh, we, went on, we intend to give this information at the end. I give the floor to uh, Tanasis to present the novelties about the graph. So those details that I presented right now, uh, please put it in the chat if you have doubts or open your microphone at the end because we have time to, to discuss, to clarify some of these issues. So, uh, Tanasis, um, the, the floor is yours to, to, to share the screen or to share the, the website from, from Open Air Graph to okay, thanks, highlight yeah. some of the developments uh, from, from our graph to our colleagues here. Okay, uh, thanks Pedro for the introduction. So, um, I selected to uh, present uh, a couple of uh, new developments uh, regarding the graph, uh, some uh, that are important ones and uh, that are expecting ex expected to uh, improve the coverage uh, regarding uh, uh, some information that the graph uh, already collects. Uh, so uh, before starting, let me also uh give you a quick reminder on the uh, whole uh workflow uh to produce the graph um as you all know um we get the information uh, from the onboarded data sources based on the open air interoperability guidelines that uh, uh, you provide to open air through the open air provide service and uh, uh, we also uh, include uh, information from uh, some instrumental data sources uh, like uh, 
uh, Crossref data site, Microsoft Academic, Orchid, etc. Uh, we aggregate everything. Uh, we uh, also exploit information from uh, PDFs and XMLs that contain full text of publications uh, to extract uh, enrichments that uh, can be included in the graph through mining. Uh, we also deduplicate uh, all the um, uh, publications and all the research objects. Uh, we further enrich uh, using inference uh, the records that we produce. Uh, for example, if we have the information that a particular product uh, is relevant to an organization and we know that this is a department of another organization, we also infer uh, this connection and then we clean and finalize uh, the graph uh, production. And uh, as you'll know, uh, then uh, this graph is uh, available through, public, uh, through the public uh, graph dataset and uh, the public graph API. Uh, the API is updated each time that we have a new version of the graph. This is uh, in, in most cases once uh, in a month. And uh, the public graph data set, uh, graph data set is being updated once uh, in each uh, six months. And uh, these data are also used uh, to uh, uh, provide the, uh, the the required uh, uh, information for uh, the opener added value service like the opener con uh, connect, the opener explore, the monitor, uh, the open science observatory and others. And uh, also for third party services that are consuming the opener uh, graph data uh, to provide uh, useful functionalities uh, to the research community at large and other uh, related stakeholders. And of course, through these services, we also get some user feedback that is also included uh, inside uh, the graph data. Um, and based on all this, uh, uh, based on this workflow, uh, we are now able to produce a graph that contains metadata and uh, interactions for more than uh, 170 million publications. And uh, more than uh, 59 million research data sets and more than uh, uh, 300,000 uh, research software. Uh, and also we are covering other research products, uh, millions of other research products. So uh, you already know about all this. So um, I would like the, the first uh, development that I would like to to discuss today uh, is the one related uh, to the production of, of the fields of science, the FOS uh, classifications. Uh, so what is this? Um, this is a classification of the uh, publications of the research publications based on their field, based on the discipline, the topic that they are related to. Uh, so. Uh, Open Air has this uh, collaboration with Athena Research Center and uh, a research team uh, there that uh, they are producing uh, classifications for the uh, publications. Uh, they are using metadata and the content uh, of the publications uh, to identify, to reveal uh, the most uh, related topics, the, more, the most related fields of science. Uh, of each particular publication, and uh, they are giving these uh, classifications uh, to open air uh, to be included uh, inside uh, the graph. And of course, um, this is a, a very um, valuable. Uh, this is a valuable information uh, in many applications. Uh, because uh, for some uh, areas of uh, application, like for example, research assessment, it is important to know uh, the field of uh, particular publications. Uh, until now, uh, we have about uh, we have uh, about forty million publications that have been already classified uh, with at least one uh, such field, uh, and by the end of the year. Uh, we expect to have uh, classifications for uh, more than 100 million uh, publications. 
Now, uh, something important to mention is uh, that uh, these classes, uh, these are not just uh, some topic names. Uh, these are uh, classes that come uh, from a particular taxonomy, the Sinobo taxonomy that it is uh, maintained and produced by this Athena Research Center uh, team that I mentioned. Uh, it is a taxonomy that has multiple levels. Uh, in the top levels, you can find uh, fields that are pretty generic, like, for example, in this case here, medical and health sciences. Uh, so there is a small number of uh, generic uh, fields of science that are covered from level one. Then in level two, uh, you dive into uh, a more um, uh, specified, uh, more um, uh, le uh, less um, uh, generic uh, fields, uh, like uh, here the clinical medicine. And as you go uh, below that, uh, the topics become even more uh, specific. And uh, for the, the, the uh, methodology that is used to produce uh, this uh, taxonomy uh, is based on uh, well-established uh, taxonomies uh, for scientific fields. And as we go uh, to the lower levels, uh, the team that produces these uh, classifications uh, takes into consideration techniques like topic modeling, and then uh, they are working together with with experts in their respective fields uh, to pro to to provide uh, some meaningful meaningful names uh, to these fields. Uh, so uh, when we are uh, saying that uh, we are providing. Uh, classifications for FOS uh, for different publications in the graph. Uh, this means that uh, we have these classifications in different levels. Uh, so uh, you can get uh, 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 right now classifications at, until level four, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And by the end of the year, we expect uh, to have uh, classifications in more depth, at least to some uh, domains uh, for which uh, these levels are, are fine-grained uh, and uh, worked by the community. Um, so this is the first uh, uh, development that I would like to discuss. Uh, the second one uh, is relevant to the affiliation links that are included inside the graph. So uh, one uh, information that it is again important in some domains uh, is to uh, identify connections uh, between uh, research uh, products and uh, organizations, research, research organizations. Uh, we call them affiliation links. And uh, although this information is very useful because for example, if you don't have these links, uh, some of the opener services that are currently provided, like the opener monitor, uh, cannot work properly. Uh, the coverage is very important in these cases because if you don't have the link, then if you want, for example, to get a glimpse on the uh, productivity or uh, the aggregated impact uh, of a particular organization, uh, you are missing a lot of content if you don't have a large coverage in these affiliations. Uh, so, although this is a pretty important information, uh, it is not always present uh, in large uh, scholarly communication uh, data sources, like, for example, Crossref. Uh, it is provided, uh, but not for all uh, the entries. And even in cases that uh, this information is provided, uh, in, in usually it's provided in the form of uh, affiliation strings, uh, which are strings that are describing particular organizations, uh, something that it is not always easy to map uh, to, to a particular uh, organization and to know for sure that uh, everything is related to this organization. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a lot of you may already know that uh, there are some initiatives that are providing persistent identifiers to organizations, for example, the ROR uh, 
uh, initiative provides uh, the raw IDs. And uh, uh, if uh, you have uh, the raw IDs of the organizations that are linked to a particular research product, that is a very valuable type of information. This is exactly uh, what we are trying to do for the graph. Uh, so uh, we are trying to identify this type of connections, exact connections that uh, we know for sure uh, the, which is the organization, the linked organization. Uh, to do so, uh, we follow multiple approaches and uh, at, at the uh, one hand, uh, we uh, are using uh, full text PDFs and XMLs that we are collecting uh, from the publisher websites uh, to extract uh, affiliation strings and then uh, map them to particular raw IDs. And on the other hand, we are also uh, gathering uh, affiliation strings that are provided from Crossref and PubMed uh, to do a similar job. Of course, uh, for this work to be uh, useful, uh, it is very important to have a mapping algorithm between affiliation strings and uh, raw IDs that is pretty precise. Uh, our engineers uh, have developed a such algorithm. We have uh, uh, preliminary evaluation results that show that uh, the precision of uh, uh, the affiliation links is pretty high, uh, more than 90%. And uh, the recall uh, is also more than uh, 85%, which is pretty large. And based on this activity between August and November, uh, in the versions of the graph uh, that we had released uh, during this period, uh, we experienced uh, an addition of uh, 34.3 million affiliation links that come from PDF mining. Uh, 25.8 million links from Crossref and 23.5 million links from PubMed. Uh, of course, there are overlaps between all these sources. And of course, uh, apart from this, uh, we already had the affiliation links provided by uh, Microsoft Academic. Uh, the problem is that Microsoft Academic has, be, has been discontinued. And uh, it is important for us to follow such a process, approaches like those that I uh, discussed, uh, because otherwise uh, we were going to have a small coverage on the affiliation links uh, from the, for the years uh, after 2022 that uh, Microsoft Academic uh, has been discontinued. In general, uh, we now, uh, thanks to all these uh, um, initiatives, uh, we now have uh, inside the graph uh, affiliation links for more than 79 million uh, research products in total. And of course, this number is expected uh, to be uh, to become larger uh, month by month because we are using new versions of Crossref and PubMed and because we are processing uh, new uh, PDF files. Okay. Uh, and with that, I would like to conclude. Great, great, uh, Thanasis. Many thanks. So this is our uh, very good news uh, about the graph that are really contributing to fill some gaps in this uh, in this ecosystem. So thank you very much. So we have three or four minutes for questions. Please add your questions. Uh, open your microphone or or, uh, or raise your hand or or just put it in the chat. In fact, uh, Pascal Denges already asked a question: Are the fields of science? also attributed to other objects than publications like projects or data sets? I think for uh, data sets, yes, but not for... Uh... Yes, uh, yes, uh, for some of uh, the data sets, but not for all of them. I mean, uh, the large coverage uh, is related to publications uh, because the current approach, the Sinobo approach, is focusing on publications. So it, it uses also some information like, for example, uh, citations and references of these publications, the venues that they are published, so they are using as much information as possible. Uh, this does not mean that uh, they are not producing also uh, some of these classifications for uh, data sets that have the OI, but currently a uh, limitation of that approach is that uh, it refers only to items that have 
uh, connected DOIs. Uh, in the future, of course, this uh, may change, but uh, currently the majority of the uh, products that I mentioned that I, they get uh, uh, a field of science are publications. And it's in fact, I think I don't think uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think it's our intention to also to do the same for projects. It's only to research outputs. No, this is the, the yes, original but, idea. Yes, but if you have the uh, the fields of science for uh, the publications based uh, on the publications that each project has, you can infer uh, mm -hmm. the fields of science that is related to this particular project. So if this is something useful, we could consider uh, applying some kind of inference there to do this. Okay, any other question, clarification needed about these um, three highlights that, uh, that um, Tanasis gave about the graph? Always the visible part of the graph you can explore a bit in explore.openair.eu, but of course then you have the, um, also the website that uh, Andre already shared here, uh, where you can uh, understand better the workflows and all the, the novelties uh, in the news. Pascal, uh, are the SDGs also attributed now or still in beta? Okay. Yes, uh, uh, they are. Uh, I mean, um, okay, uh, in theory, uh, where, when we are uh, providing uh, the SDGs and the FOS in Explore, we say that this is in beta, uh, but uh, uh, right now uh, we can say that uh, this process is pretty mature. Uh, we have tested it for uh, a, a long period, for several months. Uh, uh, we have SDGs and uh, FOS uh, for our uh, products. Uh, the coverage has increased also for the SDGs. I don't remember by heart uh, the numbers right now. Uh, I selected to focus on FOS, but uh, something similar is also true for the SDG classifications as well. Uh, they are also being produced by the same team, the Sinobo team, uh, using, of course, a different uh, classification algorithm. But we still want to receive feedback uh, directly from Explore if there are anything that people want to report. I remember that we asked that in the past for um, the fields of science and also for SDGs. Maybe SDGs is more relevant now, but um, Silvia, Adriana Tomescu, what standards are important? Are imported? Sorry, not important, imported. <laughs> um, and uh, and okay and Pascal. Uh, so what standards? Uh, I'm not sure if Sylvia is asking about what we aggregate here, or if it is related with one of the updates. Sylvia, if you want to, to standards regarding which aspect? Yes, uh... if you want to clarify. So if uh, you can. Expose. At the ontological yeah. base, at the ontological foundation of the graph, did you use uh, FOAF, for example, friend of a friend or Dublin core for linking data? Uh, it, it, uh, how we include the information in the graph uh, in general or how we consume the field of science that uh, uh, or the affiliation links uh, are you referring uh... i think it's uh, the basis of the of the graph what we have in the graph okay so, okay yeah. in in the graph uh, everything that is uh, uh, supported by uh, the open air interoperability guidelines um, if if we have repositories publishers uh, journals registries aggregators pre systems uh, that uh, are following the guidelines that uh, uh, we have uh, in place maybe someone can uh, include here the link. Uh, then if we have a such entity, a such data source uh, that is uh, 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 aligned uh, to these uh, standards, uh, then uh, we can uh, consume uh, from them. Uh, regarding the other, the instrumental data sources, uh, we follow a different approach uh, because uh, we include them to apply additional enrichments and uh, to increase the coverage in particular aspects that are important for the graph. Uh, we put uh, some effort in uh, developing 
uh, our own uh, workflows for integrating them and uh, uh, aggregating to the context that we get from the onboarded uh, data sources. Okay, thank you, thank you. So um, I think we um, uh, can move now. So when the Tanas is, you are free because I know that you would, <laughs> you need yeah. to be free uh, three minutes uh, uh, ago uh, already. Do you want to say yeah, something so, uh, to finish? No, no. Uh, thank you for the invitation and apologies that I couldn't make it for the whole uh, meeting. If there are any follow-up questions, you can send me an email uh, or you can forward it here. And uh, I think that uh, Pedro and uh, Andre will let me know. Thank okay, you all thank for you. The, your yes. interest. Yes, thank you very much, Thanasis. And so feel free to ask more questions. If you are not um, will, uh, willing to reply, I will, we will ask uh, um, Thanasis. Uh, so, Dimitris, um, you can, I, don't, I think you are. You have slides also, or do you want to? Yes, just, I have slides. Okay, okay. If you want to, you can open. Just a clarification, because it, this is why we have these community calls for people to feel free to ask questions. So we have always, uh, so experienced providers, that's experienced providers. So we can always ask and clarify things. Uh, so feel free to ask questions. Um, this question that Sylvia raised, Sylvia Adriana raised, it's uh, so it's it's relevant. Uh, just just a clarification, and then Dimitris feel feel free to start. Uh, and you can Andre already put the link for the guidelines. So. Um, when we mentioned metadata interoperability guidelines for open air, we didn't reinvent the wheel. Of course, we rely on well-established standards. So Dublin Core is is there if you if you see. So alignments with data seat, uh, with serif, with uh, control vocabularies from COAR and others. So uh, this is what we try to um, integrate in a, in, a, in a comprehensive way in our guidelines and then ask uh, those providers to expose uh, the metadata uh, compatible with, uh, with our interoperability uh, guidelines, just to, to clarify that. Okay, Dimitris. Now, so the idea was also to highlight uh, things from the user statistics, those that are benefiting from user statistics or those that uh, can benefit and you can always uh, come to the dashboard and uh, enable this service. Uh, Dimitris will follow up with you about this, but so we have, we will have, we have some novelties that are important that so we can share with you. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Pedro. I will try to present um, the new development in the user count uh, service. Uh, in order to incorporate, uh, to accommodate the, uh, the new counter uh, release uh, five version of, uh, of this, of, uh, which is the standard for the user statistics uh, um, uh, exchange. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. So first of all, a, a quick recap about the usage count service, what are its uh, main features. Um, the user statistic services, the, uh, uh, the user count services, the user statistic service uh, for open air uh, research graph, the research graph, which is presented by uh, Thanasis in the previous um, uh, talk. Um, what the, the service simply does is to count uh, the usage uh, events uh, that are related to the items in the uh, uh, research graph, the, the publications, the data sets, etc. Uh, we are um, have, we are offering two different, um, let's say, workflows for counting for uh, collecting usage events. We have the push workflow, which tracks usage activity uh, using a specialized server side software, and we are also collecting uh, count the reports. Uh, already available counter reports in order to uh, uh, somehow incorporate them in our uh, um, user statistics uh, database. We are uh, anonymizing um, uh, the IPs in order to, to respect uh, user privacy, and we are also uh, exploiting the uh, uh, metadata duplication functionalities offered by Open Research Graph, that uh, which allows us to accumulate usage uh, for the same uh, research uh, outputs. The service is um, compliant with a counter count of, of practice and provides standard based user statistics. Uh, we, currently, we are uh, uh, supporting release, we are compliant with uh, uh, counter release four, and uh, I will present how we, uh, the service is compliant with uh, release five. And in general, the user account service uh, provides, offers indicators uh, that we consider that complement other uh, traditional and alternative bibliometric indicators. 
uh, in order to provide um, a comprehensive and, and most importantly, a, a recent view of, of the impact of uh, uh, the academic uh, resources. So uh, up to now, up to now we have uh, we are compliant with a counter code of practice release for metrics, which are uh, uh, offering uh, the well-known metrics uh, views and downloads views for uh, the metadata downloads uh, for uh, full text uh, download. And for the future, we are we have developed uh, new metric types, new concepts, uh, and new reports for, in order to be comply uh, compliant with a, a counter code of practice release uh, five. So the counter code of practice release five metric types, we are moving from views and downloads to uh, investigations and requests. Um, I don't know uh, which of you are are uh, are, uh, are known these uh, changes. Um, for an investigation is, is tracked when a user performs any action in relation to a content item or a title. For example, an investigation is uh, uh, happens when a view uh, um, uh, an item uh, a user uh, um, views an abstract in a, in a repository, or uh, view HTML full text, or uh, views a PDF, or downloads a PDF, or a view or uh, views uh, access an, an, an article and previews an article. On the other side, a, a request is uh, specifically related to viewing or downloading the full content item. So we have investigation, we cover almost any activity in the, um, uh, regarding an item, and we have the request which uh, covers the, the, uh, the download uh, and the view of the, uh, the full item content. So the definitions of, of these metrics, um, we have the unique item investigations, which count unique article investigations and requests inside a, a user session. We have the total item investigations, which count a total number of items information, which is related to an article which has been viewed, including all article uh, full content views. Uh, the total item requests, which count all article full content views uh, uh, across all formats, for example, HTML, PDF, JPEG, uh, uh, etc. Uh, this is more equivalent to the release for uh, metric type uh, downloads. And we have the unique item requests with which count unique article full content views in a given session uh, regarding of the format. So for example, if a user views an article PDF and HTML in the same session, this will only count uh, as one. Um, I will try to provide a, a, an example scenario, which is uh, one of my favorites that uh, uh, somehow uh, explains how these um, new uh, metrics are uh, uh, calculated. So we have Susan, who is researching the history of Porto in a repository, in a Umino repository, and uh, uh, she performs a, a search, and from the list of search results, she, opens, she decides to open three article abstracts. So up to now, we have uh, the following count. We have three total item investigations and three unique item uh, investigations. So Susan, after reading the abstracts, decides to download the PDFs for the two of, of the articles. So the counts, uh, regarding uh, the uh, release five of the counter code of practice, change to five total item investigations since we have three views and two downloads, three unique views since we have uh, three unique item investigations since we have three unique views, and we have two uh, total item requests and two uh, unique item um, requests. Uh, so how, wh what is the rationale be behind these uh, metric types? Uh, for the total item requests, they are considered important for providers that have, that have full text content and uh, report the number of full text downloads or views. The total item investigations, we consider that they provide a big picture perspective of uh, the total number of investigations. And as far as unique investigation and request concern, they are considered a powerful metric for identifying activities uh, within uh, with unique items and titles. And they are also offering a more accurate, a most accurate for they are most accurate for cost uh, per user uh, analysis and measure the performance of the of the data source. The data types that are covered by uh, the release five protocol are articles, book, book segment, collections, databases, data sets, journals, multimedia, uh, platforms, and uh, repository items. Uh, there are a number of reports that are uh, offered by the counter uh, release five, but uh, uh, for now we have implemented uh, 
four of them. Actually, there are three, and one is the, regarding the data sets uh, reports, which is provided by, which has been uh, defined by uh, Make Data Count initiative. So we have uh, the report name, which is the platform master report, which is a report summarizing usage activity uh, for the repository uh, uh, by month uh, and metric type, for example, total item investigations, total item requests, and by item type. We have the platform usage report, which is a more generic uh, uh, report, uh, which summarizes usage activity for the repository by month and uh, uh, broken down by uh, metric type. We have the Platform master item report, which is which comes from the uh, release uh, four, with some minor changes, um, which is used to uh, report items request uh, by month, metric type, item type, and repository. And we have the data set report, which is similar to the platform master item report, but only for uh, for data sets. So uh, I have uh, a plan uh, to show you a demo of, of, of these reports that have been developed in our beta uh, providers uh, dashboards. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions so far regarding yes, the feel new- free, uh... feel, feel free to, to ask the questions. I think it was quite uh, clear and uh, with an example, so it's always important and interesting. So feel free to, 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 to give the example. I think it was, was great. But if you have questions, just open your microphone. So this is a community call, so you can you can interrupt and ask question, or just feel free to uh, put it in the chat. Uh, I don't think we have in the chat, but okay. I think it's also relevant to highlight this this um, maturity of the uh, of the counter code of practices that is becoming more mature and more relevant. And I think this uh, last uh, update in version is is relevant, and uh, so it's good to have uh, available and already. Uh, ready to be in production so feel free to 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 give the the demo um. okay uh i can start with um uh, all this have been implemented in beta so far and we will move to production uh soon um so if you go if you have enabled the service you will see that uh, there is a, a tab usage counts so you, you are you are only sharing the the slides ah. so you need maybe to ah sorry 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 so, 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 to interrupt and start again okay okay sorry i also have it i have open i have opened the menu okay. a bit but feel free to yeah okay perfect. can you see my screen yes yes it's working ah, okay so cool. it's good okay good. okay so uh, if you have enabled the service, you can see uh, from the provider's dashboard, you can see the tab usage counts where you can have all the information from the um, uh, that has been uh, collected from your repository, the number of downloads, the number of views, and uh, some graphs. And you can um, click here to get the statistics reports. So uh, up in the production, we have uh, so far the release, uh, counter release four reports, but in, in beta, we have also added the release uh, five reports. That these are the four reports that I have mentioned in the, the presentation, the PR, the PR under, underscore P1, uh, the uh, IR, the DSR reports. For uh, So let's see the master platform report. This is um, a report summarizing, as I mentioned, the, uh, the user's activity for the repository by month metric type and item type so we have um you can here specify the range for example you can we can have uh up for this uh from uh, uh january to uh, october 2023 and you you can get the report it's a big report and will take some time I think it's important to highlight when, when the results are loading and then Dimitris can explain that what you see now in production, if you have access, you see only counter four, okay? Uh, what we yeah. want is to have in the same page, the counter five and the counter four, and then at some point we will uh, discard the counter four, but we will so, keep it both. Yes, please, Dimitris. So you see that uh, this is the user statistics report for this particular uh, platform uh, master report you see the platform which is the university of mino this is the data type the article and the, the access method is regular we can also have uh, um, tdm but it's uh, 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 this will be explained in our, um, in the protocol and the results for example 
For January, you have uh, 41,000 total item requests, the total number of investigations, the unique item requests and unique item investigations. This is uh, for this uh, for all the articles that are available in this platform, in the, in the repository, in the MINO repository, and uh, for the uh, period of, um, of 10 months. And then we have the books, a similar report for the books, etc. For this particular report, you can also select to have information only for metric types, uh, if uh, for the metric types that you want, for example, total item requests and unique item requests. And you can also see again, see the results here. Um, the next report is the, the report summarizing users' activity broken down by metric type. For example, again, I will use the same period. And you can see the total reports for uh, for all items uh, for this particular uh, platform. The, the name of the platform is the Umino uh, repository. Total item request for January, for February, etc. So, um, this is the report. The item uh, reports, uh, uh, as mentioned, um, provides the the statistics for all items or for items that can be selected. For example, if I go, I I will select a a period with um uh for of only one month in order to get a quick report but for all items yeah you can see here that you can this the report cannot be displayed in the screen so you have to download it but uh, you can download it here it's put it here in the zip file. So if I open it. Can you just explain a bit that uh, that option, why you, why some we can see and others we can, uh, so we need to download it. I think there is just to yes, because that explanation. The, yes, the, because this is a big report and it cannot be displayed properly in the, um, in the, the, browser. Uh, the browser. So we have decided to, uh, Facilitate to give it this. To fac yes, and to give, provide it as a as a JSON file, which is also the format that is supported by the Counter Code of Practice uh, directive. And this is a proper uh, report that can be downloaded, and uh, maybe you can uh, process it in your uh, premise in your site. So every every uh, this explanation is important. Every time that we run a, a query here, that the 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 can you the see my screen? Is... Yes, can yes, you see yes. The report? Yes. Okay. No, 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 no. We cannot ah. see. You cannot see. You cannot see because you are. Okay, so I have we, we can see the button download report because okay. you are not sharing the entire, okay, let, the entire let, desktop. Yes. Okay, let me share. Okay. So every time it. that uh, so the um, so Dimitri is just uh, the, just an explanation. So um, about this download and see it in the in the in the browser. So it's not for for the type. It's for the volume of yes. the of yes the, yes of the report. Yes. Every time it, that the volume is. Is big, so we so by default uh, we it creates a download uh, button. button. Yes, yes. It is offered by uh, in order you can download it uh, using the button. Yes. Can you see now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is the report. The this file. is the yeah. This is the JSON file that it can. It's a proper JSON file that can be used uh, in order to uh, process the report. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, yes. I can also provide an example of um, of it, uh, and if if you select specific, a, a specific identifier, uh, specific publication, a public yes, publication. Uh, not find any data. Let's maybe the year. Entire yeah, year. yeah.
Okay, but uh, so so we did yeah. uh, we put this in the beta. We did the testing. Uh, yes. I think we, we are quite happy with the tests. So if, if any of you is uh, is available, so the issue here is that uh, not um, so we are not only have a small uh, number of um, providers, uh, the repositories that are. Uh, Sorry, again, this is yes. requires a download. If I okay, if I download the report, there's an item report. Um, you see that in the zip file it's yes, 66 yes. megabytes, so it, it's difficult yeah. to, <laughs> to present it here. So yes, okay. So this is more or less a similar uh, um, uh, report is from uh, from data sets. Um, let's see if we can have some results. Yeah. This is the report from datasets. We have the dataset title, uh, the year of publication, the access method, and the results. And another title, the year of publication, and some other results. This is only for a two uh, we, uh, for a one year, a one month period. That's why we have this uh, uh, this uh, short list, let's say. So uh, this is more or less um, what we have developed for the counter release five. Uh, feel free to, to join the beta provide uh, dashboard and play with this. And if you have any uh, uh, issues, please report it uh, uh, to us. Thank you very much. So I was just giving that ex explanation that we we put it in beta. We are happy with the tests. We made some tests with some of the data sources. The limitation here for some of you is that we don't have um, we only have a small amount of providers that are in beta. Okay, because we we cannot have a fully beta thing uh, to, for testing. But we are quite happy, and um, so we will put that in production um, as soon as possible. So. Um, we we wanted to do it before the end of the year, but I I envisage some limitations because December sometimes is short, <laughs> usually is short. So, but for sure in January we will have everything in production, and the, and in fact it's good because you can explore a bit the results of 2023 already using these uh, these new reports. I think it will be quite uh, quite useful uh, for you. If you didn't uh, um, have access, if you don't have access to the user statistics, you can always enable and work with us in order to ensure that you you we can proper um, facilitate this service. Uh, for you okay um and uh, feel free to to ask questions and uh, so because we we, we we can provide you support just to finish because we have only three minutes more um and uh, so i just want to to highlight to you this um uh, this report that in fact was uh, released yesterday uh, some of the numbers uh, in fact we discussed it a bit in in uh, in september in the general assembly of open air but in but then the the, the authors of, of this report just uh, um, uh, put some more effort to to proper present it and explore and analyze the results and uh, they yesterday uh, open air and coar start the in the and the liver and the um, and Spark uh, Europe start uh, disseminating the, this report. So feel free to access the DOI uh, in, available in Zenodo, the, public, the report available in Zenodo, and also a news item that uh, was released. Andre is also putting that in the chat. Um, quite, quite interesting results. Uh, I think it's important for us to explore this uh, some of you have, may have answered this uh, survey that um, the survey that um, was used for this uh, report uh, uh, please read it uh, i have at least for me I, I i had some surprises others i have some confirmations some things that uh, are uh, that prove the value of, of, of repositories some other things that uh, prove that we need in we need to work uh, more um to to um, 
to uh, increase the role and to, to 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 improve the role that repositories play in the in the scholarly communication ecosystem. Uh, so uh, let's work together on this. Uh, our idea in the after uh, this release and the. Uh, feel free to explore and to ask questions. Uh, our idea is that the upcoming call, a community call, we dedicate uh, half of the community call to discuss a bit the results. We will invite them. Um, at least uh, Eloy Rodriguez from the University of Minho, my, uh, uh, our colleague here, uh, it's one of the authors um, uh, from Open Air and from Coar, uh, is available to discuss with us the the, the report in the coming up uh, in the upcoming community call. So, feel free to access the the the. Um, the report and discuss it with your colleagues and then your countries. I think they are relevant. So um, we will continue uh, to try to have every every month the community call in the first Wednesday of the month. We will follow this. Uh, we don't. We will not do it in the first Wednesday of uh, January. In fact, the first Wednesday of of the year. But we propose to do it on the tenth of January. So the, the upcoming two uh, we will schedule. You will see it in this uh, page, openair.eu provide uh, AFAN community calls. Uh, and you can access the, um, the, at least we will schedule until uh, until June. Um, and uh, feel free to put it in your calendars. Uh, so we are waiting for you on the 10th of January. Where we provide some novelties on the for the dashboard, some recent function, new functionalities in the in the in the dashboard, and uh, and we discuss the report that uh, I just highlighted here from the current state and the future directions for open repositories in Europe. It's quite relevant rep report that we can discuss in this um, in this uh, first community call from twenty twenty four. Subscribe the newsletter. If you didn't subscribe, we try always to send the newsletter uh, just one or two days before the community call and uh, put it in your calendar. Feel free. So we will try to inform you the first week of the month of uh, the year uh, about the, the the calendar of the of the community calls. So and um, we are coming to to the end. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not sure if there are any other question here in the chat. If yes, we can reply in one or two minutes. Uh, so recordings are available, slides also. Yes, Antennas, please feel free to, to ask. We have some. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for very interesting novelties. <clears throat> but I have uh, other questions. Yes, please. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, my very interesting, uh, very useful ticket. <clears throat> Uh, I uh, sent uh, uh, yesterday a reminder up about, about the ticket to Leonidas and Andre. Okay, okay. I mm -hmm. see that now uh, these guys participate in this meeting. And uh, my question, when we will receive answer uh, with my colleague, because we mm, have been writing answer from since uh, July, June, June 16. Okay, about the aggregation of your, um, I'm not sure if Andre have some novelties or, um, this is important, so you can always put the question. So we we have a support system in place. We are, um, we also have um, some changes between, um, it's important to say that Antennas, between the summer and now, we changed the, the support team for the mm -hmm. aggregation the aggregation team. This is why we may have some delays. Other things, we don't have delays. For some of the things about the aggregation, we may may, may have. Do you, can you remind me uh, your uh, the name of your repository? I know that is from um, uh, Lithuania, this, uh, but... Uh, yeah, this if, is much I'm looking at your ticket right now, we will reply to you. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. If you okay. reply, we will... Uh, communicate uh, with you and thank you for um, yes we try we try it with this is very quickly this problem okay 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 we try to do our best so thank you for to raise that issue so if there are any if you found any other um, uh, missing uh, communication etc just just ask us because we can we can we can try to do our best 
uh, so Antenna, thank you very much. So it's, mm -hmm. um, but but uh, remind us about the name because people can check your repository. So it's uh, mm -hmm. from from Lithuania. It is very uh, simple uh, name: Lithuanistica International Databases. Yes. Lithuanistica International, <laughs> International <laughs> Database. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you for joining the community call. Uh, if you don't have any other. Uh, comment uh, or request uh, also feel free to contact us we try to do our best um, to reply quickly when we found more uh, critical issues in terms of aggregation etc so sometimes we don't have we cannot reply quickly uh, but we have already um, improved our aggregation team and i hope that we can we don't need to have delays in the future thank you very much thank you all bye bye uh, have a nice um, Christmas